Hello ladies, gentlemen, and my NB friends, and welcome back to the Keldian channel. I'm your host, Keldian, and today we're talking about the greatest video game series of all time, Call of Duty Zombies. More specifically, I want to talk about arguably the most interesting game in the series, Black Ops 4. There's a lot to dive into regarding Black Ops 4 Zombies, including but not limited to, the core aspects of the mode. For those unaware, Treyarch revamped a lot of the core features that have been staples in Zombies for years prior and attempt to streamline the mode in Black Ops 4 and give the player more freedom in how they approach the mode. Perhaps unsurprisingly, fans derided the decision and the same format present in Black Ops 4 has never been attempted since. As someone that is admittedly mixed on Black Ops 4, I want to go back and revisit the system in its entirety. Did the developers achieve their goal? Were the trade-offs worth sacrificing the old for the new? How do I feel about the system in theory, and how does it actually play in the end? Believe it or not, BO4 came out 5 years ago. Jesus Christ, I'm getting old. I think it's only fair to revisit this polarizing title and see whether or not it was justifiably scrutinized. I've always found the decision to revamp the core features to be fairly audacious, but was that bold leap really worth it all in the end? Join me today as we take a look back at Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Zombies Perk System. Before we get too deep into dissecting this system, I first want to go over what was changed and why. Let's start by watching this sit down discussion uploaded by YouTuber JohnnyJ25 where he asked Jason Blundell, the leading game director and producer for both Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 Zombies, why a specific perk was removed. There is an absence of jug in this game. Yes. What was the decision making process like that to cut some of those beloved perks? Yeah, um, well, was it a tough decision to make or? No, because the way the way we look at stuff and it may break people's hearts, but completely emotionally. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, I said when we wrote it all down and looked at it, you know, one of the big decisions was we want it to uh, have meaningful choices about what you're doing, what you're picking from the starting weapon, your special equipment, your special weapon. Um, and when we got to perks, um, we had this problem. And the problem is, is that everyone gets the same things. Mm -hmm. And so when we switched it on, we switched it on with all the normal perks first time. And uh, we just took a survey. You know, like a little survey monkey, right? We can look at it. Yeah. And uh, everyone had the same perks. And we kept on adding more and more perks. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what we said. We, we said, okay, let's take it out, let's take it out. And as soon as we took out certain perks, suddenly when I looked at the survey, mm -hmm. everything started changing. And I was like, this is what we want. And then people then started to have their own strategies. And then to, they had different strategies on their own than when they were friends and with mm -hmm. certain friends based on how they play. And we're like, that's what we're after. A phrase thrown in is Core 4, which refers to the four original perks first introduced all the way back in Verruckt of COD World at War. These perks are Speed Cola, Juggernog, Double Tap, and Quick Revive. All four are survival mode essentials and all played a huge part in the progression of a game. In a game of COD Zombies, the higher the round, the stronger the zombies. How is a player supposed to properly deal with the ever more dangerous threat? The original answer? Perks. The so-called Core 4 all gave clear improvements to the player and were staples in the series up until Black Ops 4. Speed Cola increased reload speed and also allowed you to rebuild barriers faster. Juggernog increased your health, Quick Revive allowed you to revive teammates faster and then let you recover health quicker and would give you a self res in solo matches later down the line, and Double Tap, originally, just increased your weapon's fire rate, in Black Ops 2 it made it so every shot fired two bullets and also increased your fire rate, and then in Black Ops 3 I believe they just went back so it shot two bullets for every one and didn't increase the fire rate. I hope that made sense. These four perks were essential for long matches. Without them, a lot of the main progression in the mode was gone. You had the obligatory health increase, the damage per second increase, and two helping perks that allowed you to react quicker to the aggressive horde. World of War Zombies was simple, but still effective and fondly remembered for a reason. Shinonuma is my favorite map from that game, and if it didn't have the perks like Noct, it wouldn't be as fun or worth the setup. That's World of War though. What about Black Ops 1? I say as if anyone actually gives a fuck. Well, Black Ops 1 is an interesting story. Starting with the first DLC map, Ascension, two new perks were introduced. There's PhD Flopper, the ever popular perk that negated all explosive damage for the player and also caused an AoE explosion when diving off heightened elevations. Also added was Stamina Up, a perk that increased your running speed and allowed you to sprint for a longer duration. Both of these perks were welcome additions to the meta as they both had clear viability. There was one issue however, the player could only have 4 perks at any given time. Well which perks do you choose? 
Well, the added health from Juggernog is essential. If you're playing solo, then the self-res aspect of Quick Revive is a must-have. Speed Cola helps you in a pinch with the lightning fast reload time, and then there's the DPS increase with Double Tap. And I know, I know, Double Tap wasn't technically on Ascension, but all these perks were in later maps together, so just don't worry about it. Here's the golden question. Which perk is less valuable to you that you'd be willing to replace it for one of the new ones? Now, while Stamina Up and PhD Flopper are very good perks, they aren't as genre-defining or progression-based as the others. They aren't as blatant or vital for the gameplay loop as the originals. More perks were released throughout Black Ops 1's DLC cycle. The other two newcomers were Deadshot Daiquiri and Mule Kick. Deadshot reduced the spread of hip firing, would also deal more headshot damage, and on console would auto-aim to the heads of the zombies when aiming down sights. Then there was Mule Kick, which is the worst thing ever and I hate it. This trend was kept up in Black Ops 2. Each map introduced a new perk, but you could only get four at a time. Transit introduced Tombstone, Die Rise introduced Chugabud, Mob of the Dead introduced Electric Cherry, and Buried introduced Vulture's Aid. The only map that didn't introduce a new perk was Origins, which instead added a lot of map-based objectives as well as the Derwunderfizz machine, which effectively worked as a mystery box for perks. I.e., you give up points and it gives you a random perk from the pool for you to choose. Something I have yet to acknowledge is that there were some ways to bypass the 4 perk limit. That said, it was either through a time-consuming side method, or just entirely luck-based. For example, the monkeys in Shangri-La have a very very slim window during their power-up rotation to stop on a perk bottle. This power-up will give the player a random perk and doesn't adhere to the 4 perk limit. So if you already have 4 perks, it will give you a 5th one. This power-up will make appearances in other maps like Moon and Buried, and that's not the only way of getting more perks, as maps like Origins had a whole side gimmick with the Golden Shovel that gave you perk slots over actual perks themselves. I mention all of this because after Black Ops 2 comes Black Ops 3, which introduced a ton of different ways to get more than 4 perks via the new Gobblegum system. Basically, these were optional bonus things that had various different effects depending on which one you would get. Some, like Perkaholic, would give you all perks available, some would give you a free perk power-up, some, like Soda Fountain, would just give you a free random perk whenever you bought a perk yourself, like there was a lot that would try to push its way through the system. It's clear that by this point, something needed to change. The system here was very pay to win where you could use real life money to roll for more of these bonuses in game. Was this a problem? No, it's a PvE survival mode and getting an edge on something like this is really just part of the game. I think the choice to add this stuff and really push it showed two things. The dissatisfaction with the current meta, as well as the creativity and ideas that the developers had. The Gobblegums weren't just perk focused, and there were a lot of helpful or unique bonuses that were only found through that system. This brings us to Black Ops 4, a game that sought to redo nearly everything about the core setup of a match. How did they go about doing this? Well, they pulled three of the so-called core four perks from the game and limited your ability to transcend beyond your four chosen perks in a match. Before we get too far into the core four, we perhaps need to acknowledge the change to the perk system as a whole. Before in matches of zombies, there would be distinct perk machines located around the map and you'd have to choose which ones you wanted during the course of the match. It seemed pretty simple on paper. In Black Ops 4, however, these distinct perk machines no longer exist. You also don't make on-the-fly decisions each match and instead, your perk options are predetermined. Something new to Black Ops 4 is the loadout system. Before starting a match, you can select your specialist weapon, your starting weapon, your equipment, elixirs, which take the place of the gobblegums from Black Ops 3, as well as what four perks you want to use. You can only select four out of the total 18 perks, and you can choose which machine or statue for the Chaos Story you want to have them. There's a ton to say about this system by itself. Like firstly, having the ability to choose which machine or statue has what perk is insanely cool. After becoming familiar with the maps, you're more capable of getting a proper setup more tuned to your personal liking and playstyle, and I think that's really neat. And apart from that, I mean 18 perks? That's a lot, and it opens the door for a lot of customization and options, right? Unfortunately, while the core four have been removed, some new necessities have taken their place. This time, there are two new requirements for each new match, Dying Wish and Bandolier Bandit. Dying Wish is essentially a crutch. Dying Wish is essentially a safety net that should the player go down when it's at a full charge, it will instead make the player invincible for a few seconds, allowing the player to escape their current situation. Bandolier Bandit is a perk that increases your weapon's ammo stock. Both of these perks may sound insanely simple, especially the latter, but in my opinion, they are essential for consistent matches. 
First of all, due to no health increase or armor system, Dying Wish is effectively your only extra barrier to help nullify the impact of player errors during the course of a match. The added ammo from Bandolier Bandit is essential because, well, you're going to go through more ammo to kill enemies and the ammo stock themselves just feel limited just to give this perk a use. 9 times out of 10, if I don't have this perk equipped, I will run out of ammo before the next special round, leaving me completely vulnerable until I scramble around, find a different weapon to replace my current setup, and in case this isn't obvious, wasting points to dump my max upgraded weapons just to get another one, upgrade it so it's viable, and then kill the horde that I couldn't before is just not a good thing. Oh yeah, max upgraded weapons are a thing, and that's new to this game too. Well, before tearing those apart, let's talk about the core 4 again. Juggernaug, Speed Cola, and Double Tap have all been removed, and they were instead replaced with commendable alternatives. Instead of limiting your perk options to these quasi-needed upgrades, they instead found unique workarounds for them instead. Juggernaug would increase your health, so to work around that, they just permanently increased player health to take 4 hits from a regular zombie. Speed Cola decreased reload time? Well now if you have all 4 perks during a match, you're just given a boost to your reload speed. Double Tap increased the DPS of your weapon? Well now you can pack a punch your weapon multiple times, not to mention that the player is given self revives in solo and thus doesn't have to rely on quick revive for them now. All of these alternatives sound really neat on paper, however they all carry the same problem. In fact, a lot of perks in this game lack something that the core 4 carried. A sense of progression. In World at War through Black Ops 3, whenever you upgraded your weapon or got a perk, you felt the benefits right away. The extra health from Juggernaug was really felt as you had less close calls, less red screens, you had more wiggle room and were able to make it farther in the game. After you pack a punch your weapon, you could see and feel your weapon being a lot more viable instantly. Same goes for Double Tap and Speed Cola as well, you could actively see and feel that progress being made. It felt like your hard work was paying off and you're rewarding you over the course of the match. Progression as a concept is a very interesting topic, and one that I hope to someday make a video on all by itself. I feel that there's a lot to be said about the player's reaction to progression and how various video games handle it in their own way. My main takeaway for this video though, is that Black Ops 4 severely lacks in this sense. The game, in attempt to rework one problem, had accidentally gotten rid of one of the most addicting and rewarding aspects of the mode almost entirely. There is no progression in the health increase, as this time it's static, you're stuck with the same health value for the duration of the entire match. There's no instant DPS reward from Pack-a-Punch or Double Tap, because due to the new repeat Pack-a-Punch tiering system, the initial upgrade is minimal and not nearly as noticeable or worth that starting price tag. Also I found this funny, based on what I can find, each Pack-a-Punch upgrade increases damage by 25%. So to double your damage beyond the initial upgrade, it costs 10,000 points. Double Tap in Black Ops 3 cost 2,000 points, and it did the exact same thing. Speed Cola was gutted, and instead you get a very slight, not nearly as fast and cartoony reload speed, but only when you acquire all four of your perks. It comes far too late and isn't enough of an upgrade to give that same feeling. This is the problem I have with Black Ops 4's perk system. I quite like the idea and don't hate the implementation. The idea of having 4 set perks and being able to choose which ones you want to use is quite neat actually. However, their means of implementation created new problems. Namely, the lack of progression and the creation of two entirely new so-called core perks. Without these perks, you're saying goodbye to the dominant strategy regardless of your playstyle. Like, please tell me, how many people actually use Electric Burst or Blood Wolf Bite? I'm willing to wager not many at all. I think the most laughable and useless one of the new perks is Stone Cold Stronghold, which is basically a piss poor version of the modern Ring of Fire field upgrade from Cold War and Vanguard, like it'll slightly boost your damage when standing still. There's a perk in this game that tries to reward you for standing still. Are you fucking kidding me? This outlines a problem with a lot of the new perks though. How do I say this? They just aren't interesting and are risky even though that's not how perks are supposed to work. Previously, perks have been a flat upgrade or gave some sort of added ability that gave you an edge during the match. The zombies get stronger, as time goes on, so do you. What works well about Ring of Fire as a field upgrade is that it's something that you can use every now and then, it gives a very clear buff but also carries a heavy risk with it. If you get overrun in the circle, you fucked up. With a perk like Stone Cold Stronghold, you aren't given any sort of increase normally. Instead, you have to stop moving, and then you get what you paid for. 
This isn't a specialty upgrade to strategically throw down at the right moment, it's a perk that takes up one of your slots and carries a heavy risk. I feel like in the quest to make 18 different perks to give the player choices, Treyarch just seriously dropped the ball and couldn't think of new or inventive ones that were balanced to their liking. Out of this new perk system, we did get secret sauce though. I want to mention this because I genuinely love it. Each time you use the perk machine or statue that has secret sauce equipped, it will give you a random perk. It's very similar to the Wunderfizz machine of past games, but the difference is that you don't get to see what perk you're getting before choosing to take it. So if you pay money, you're stuck with whatever you grabbed, which is really cool. I love starting matches with just secret sauce and seeing how far I get. Yes, I know, the girl that bitches and moans about RNG is saying how something entirely RNG based is a positive of a new gameplay system that's often derided. Now we should take a minute to answer those questions I asked at the beginning. Did the developers achieve their goal? I would say, yeah. They clearly wanted to revamp the perk system and find alternatives to what they believed was a problem with the meta, and I believe they've done just that. Were the trade-offs worth sacrificing the old for the new? On paper, I'd say a lot of the perks are interesting and the alternative should technically balance out the potential loss of progression. That said, we are still stuck with two necessities that lack a feeling of progression and instead feel like crutches for the player. They aren't natural additions, they're needed additions. How do I feel about the system in theory? Honestly, I love it. I don't think I can properly express in words just how much I love the idea of the perk system. Hell, if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be making a video. The very concept itself interests me on paper, seems really neat. Being able to pick what perks for each match, devise new plans, different setups, etc. Like it all sounds great and super fun to mess around with. Though that does bring us to our last question. How does it play in the end? I hate to say it, but it doesn't play as I think anyone had hoped for. No real noticeable sense of progression that gives the player that rewarding feeling. A lot of the perks just seem completely pointless and silly in my opinion. Other perks are required to have the best time statistically due to new problems that weren't present in past titles. New systems are lacking just in general, like the new Pack-a-Punch is just a point burner and isn't really worth the time, cost, or upgrades with each singular tier, so on and so forth. Black Ops 4 Zombies as a whole, in my opinion, is a somewhat pretty solid package. Like the flaws are plenty, but there's still a lot of fun to be had across all the maps. It's a very interesting game to look at knowing how insanely botched the release cycle and ending was. Regardless, my personal enjoyment of the game doesn't deny the fact that it clearly isn't perfect and that the team made a serious oversight. They either didn't think the potential drawbacks would outweigh the new system or they thought the fans would enjoy the new system despite the changes. I'm no game designer. I'm just an asshole on the internet. I don't mean for this final critique to really take away from the developers that put a lot of care and time into this mode, I'm simply voicing my criticisms of it because I genuinely do like Black Ops 4 Zombies, and the topic has, and probably always will, fascinate me. I think the saddest part is that after Black Ops 4, Treyarch completely switched directions and tried to pay homage to the roots of the series. Despite having a lot of new features and expanding on very basic things, such as mobility, Black Ops Cold War Zombies mode does a lot to bring back familiarity to their more user-friendly experiences. One thing they did was revert back to the original perk system, of all the perks having specific machines located around the map. They did add a slight twist though, there's now no limit to how many perks you can have. This one singular change was praised by the community and just like that, all of Black Ops 4's innovation and uniqueness of the perk system was gone. Nothing before or since has come close to capturing that same feeling, and I believe it was due to the obvious flaws and rampant outcry by the community. Combine that with two shaky, underwritten stories that were both handled poorly, with mediocre maps and you're given an experience that, while I find it incredibly interesting and fun personally, is still something that is often derided and unloved compared to entries surrounding it. Beyond Cold War, we got Vanguard, another game that was torn apart but for entirely different reasons, reasons that are best not discussed in this video. I only bring it up because the perk system, again, strayed away from Black Ops 4's system. No customization, no variety in the selection, now Modern Warfare 3 is out and we've strayed even farther from one of the most fascinating meta twists and gameplay revamps that I've ever played myself. As a longtime fan of the silly series, it really is a shame to see Black Ops 4's perk system just get entirely swept under the rug. Well that's all I had for you today. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like. If you had any thoughts regarding my points or the system as a whole, then feel free to leave a comment down below. If my video or style intrigued you in any way, then I encourage you to subscribe or at least check out a few of my other recent videos. 
Also, check me out on Twitter and Blue Sky for random nonsense. Check out my Twitch for the occasional live stream and uh, yada yada yada. That's pretty much it. Thanks again and have a great one. Okay, bye bye.